evening everybody ladies and gentlemen uh, i would hate to stand between sort of tea and my sort of high tea high tea high tea and going home after two days always very difficult to do the last session and especially the last two sessions i wasn't there for the early one but i believe all of them were outstanding i was there for the session before this and i tell you having been to many conferences really compliments to you all uh, for the legal sort of um insights into how to actually make cohesive communities and societies if i may put it that way rather than talk about legal uh, sort of frameworks i think it's really about how communities should work how people should behave how should we be responsible how should we drive power accountability and responsibility so i think that's one of the biggest takeaways that we've had in the conference you know you 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 helped to summarize the conference may probably by default without having been here the last two days it probably was even more helpful that some kind of powers went to you to say that please summarize the conference so thank you for actually doing that that was really the summary of what we want the questions were even even more exciting because the questions were all the questions that filled in the components of that framework that you all laid for actually what what, what it was and it asked real questions what is compliance what is this whole business of congruence I mean, where does congruence come from where does policy come from those were the questions that helped to do the framework of course uh, my mentor and good friend uh, mr ramadurai his speech was really uh, really really exciting and and uh, what he call enlightening because he talked about the power of many elements of living starting from time immemorial to the recent times and the various phases of uh sort of living from the industrial impact to the technological impact to the impact of what has happened recently with the chip and therefore the power of of change and i think this power of change is important in this policy congruence and therefore how do, do we build in technology change experiments to address 10 billion people i think the theme of what he said and i would i'm, I'm doing injustice when i'm trying to summarize such a great uh, sort of lecture such a great uh, validatory you know so but i think in summary if i had to do that 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 speech would go down in my mind as one of the uh, sort of most enlightening speeches that i've heard in recent times and i do travel with ram a lot but it was really i think a sort of crowning glory to a underpopulated room for that kind of speech you know i wish there were more people to there wish there were more people more pd rise and more sort of cabinet secretaries today to hear all of you actually speak the questions the people etc uh this uh, you know team of ashok and general and uh, uh, mr vishal mesi my colleague kamal of of the club of rome have done us really proud in putting to th this together the ladies the rapporteurs indira man singh and uh, so many i'm sorry if i have left out names this is not really a uh, thank you speech but i'll end with just saying uh, and highlighting two points with about two two major points about what is policy congruence have you really understood what is policy congruence in fact more importantly what is the congruence of policy you see the debate is really there what is policy congruence and what is the congruence of policy i think to merge this two you know to get an answer to that is really in a way it's a oxymoron this whole thing because you know we don't know which came first what happened are we contradicting each other because in trying to do these sessions over the last 4 years i think the team led by mr ramadurai and of course guided by the incredible experience of uh, uh ashok has been we trying to grapple actually this is not a meeting of talk me down this is not a meeting of just say you all participate and ask questions even though it feels like it you know after four years i feel have we done yet another thing is it wrong how do we do it better next year so many good points came out this, this last two sessions were to my mind in the last four years possibly the best and least attended i think how do we actually package that better for next year and how do we get a better bang for your buck as they say you know because i think there is a lot of good in what we are saying and you know to to actually achieve coherence in policies is something which the group fed back and just to your point more and if i may call you that th this has been this has been sort of recorded uh, over the last two days by my colleague and it's so coincidental that what you said is what the group has fed back 
The conclusion was governmental and institutional approach to policy congruence is what we have today. We need to imbibe a societal approach from bottom up to include everybody. That is congruence. So it's incredible because what you said is what people have fed back. This is the feedback I've got from people and I've summarized. Secondly, policy needs to take into consideration changes in technology, what Mr. Ramadurai says. Law needs to catch up with technology and move forward with explain, explanation to people at what they call the bottom of the pyramid. The knowledge actually flows from the bottom of the pyramid and therefore that's the top of the pyramid. They are the implementers of our food security in forests. This is what people have said, huh? not me. Why do we need localized congruence policies? They ask. Because we do have policy frameworks, but a distributed framework of policy is only way of effective implementation because it's a framework for all. It's a framework of inclusion. You cannot have in a country like India, you cannot have any other way but to include everybody. And you know, I come from the Northeast, so for me, you know, it's it's a it's relatively, I mean, Assam has become a little more turmoil, but, you know, people like Jitesh and all have administered or been in Assam. And I, I have, I run a social organization. I work with people. And our whole mandate is to record what the local people do. You know, we don't go there to tell them what to do. We say, that, what do you do? Medicinal plants, what is it? And that's the recording we're doing. So I'm saying, in our own way, we're saying that let us learn backwards. We're not saying we're averse to ACs and comfort and electricity. We're not saying all of that. We're not saying that we shouldn't get to the best institutions for studies, that we shouldn't travel to cities. That's the trend. We're not saying all of that. We're saying, but is there merit in actually them? Because they know best what is good for them. They know best what's good for us, actually. And they know best how to use little for more. 10 million people, how do we use that little for more? Because that village was 200 years ago only five people. Today that, that village is 200 people, but they're managing with little for more. So really, I think that's really the message. We need to form global partnerships focused on localized impact. I mean, that's in a way cliche, but really we need actually localized impact to flow upwards to global, and we don't need these great NGOs from all over the world to come and tell us what to do. I think we have to start reversing this process. You know, I'm very embarrassed recently, we had uh, our annual forum in, in Guwahati, and it was quite strange that we launched an international platform for a thing called Elephant Country. And we said, all global organizations, you become a partner here. This is not IUCN, sorry, we don't have their approval. But IUCN, you want to become a member, you'll get a little spot. Because more than 78% of Asian elephants live in India. Kerala, Assam has 50% of it, Assam and North Bengal. Little bit of Bhutan, little bit in southern China. So I can't understand why we need somebody in London or America to launch an elephant portal for us to say what to do of captive elephants or elephants in the wild. So, you know, I, it amazes me with so much education, so much this, that and the other, we still don't do it. So that's called local, really acting local with modern idiom with technology. Uh, today, we all know implementation is a problem because of institutional challenges and the last mile of communication. So how do we have implementation policies? You know, how do you work on that aspect? As mentioned, good governance is a value-driven process and the policies that are ancillary to a good, uh, good uh, system of governance should reflect such values. And that was the point that you had made, sir. That good values, you, meaning you have to define, you have to imbibe. Meaning, hurting somebody else cannot be a good value. I mean, whatever else you say, to me, that's the simplest. Eating more may be a bad value. It's reflective in bad health, you know, diabetes capital and all that. But, but the reality is that, you know, how do we actually define a set of values for better living? Because land, energy, waste, water, air, and carbon. Carbon is a byproduct. But these five constituencies, everything that we talk about on planet Earth, people being the, the, the one aspect, which is the addition, but that's actually covered under land. So therefore, what do we have in terms of complementary in a transitory, in a trans <coughs> transitory manner uh, while ensuring that we reach our objectives in the Club of Rome? How do we, what is this bridge that we need to do? So I think uh, we have uh, achieved a lot in this conference because it's questioned us a lot in terms of should we A, first have another conference? Two is, 
if we should, what should be the format of inclusion? Meaning, why is it that we do not have a single person from the rural areas in this conference? I cannot understand for me, my life. Meaning, and this really struck me where, because we did in one of the conferences before, and I don't want to talk about that now, but we did, and it was a tremendous success. But I think as, as a person responsible for driving this organization, maybe that's a lacune. And thirdly, policy congruence. Meaning we need to question this a little more and see how it is. Because the moment you say policy, you think government. But actually, is it the stakeholder that will drive government to the point that, again, you made? So I think in summary, I'm sorry, I, I do not have concrete points of saying that these are the 10 things we are going to do. I think over the next few days, we'll reflect on all these inputs that we've got and come out with those 10 items of actual work in where there's low hanging fruit on policy congruence, but I think it will definitely be much more a community approach uh, as we did last year in some of the elements of water and water congregation and what uh, Ashok and Indira and all that put together. So um, thank you very much for your patience and uh, for the people who are not here also, have participated in the last two days. I hope we see you, some of you again next year, but uh, through the year, we will interact uh, and uh, we've had new friends and we'd love to continue this dialogue. Thank you, Mr. Ramadurai. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you. Thank you.